everyone, Emmy Lou here today. We are going to do oh, my favourite actually, Claude Monet. He was French, that's when he was born and that's when he died, so he's no longer alive. We're going to look at his work and do the famous bridge. So this is what he looked like. Really nice man. This is his very famous picture. It was actually his garden and in his garden he had this gorgeous pond and it had a bridge over it with the water lilies. This is a lovely one that my mum really likes. It's covered in paint. It's a beautiful silhouette of um, a lovely night sky. And then you've got the water lilies there. Look at the brush strokes. And when I say brush strokes, I mean all the different colours in there and all the different, can you see there's like little bits of green and blue, really beautiful colours there. This is another picture of his garden. It's like a photograph, this one. It's got a lovely weepy, weepy, weeping willow tree there. And then, this is actually Claude Monet leaning over his bridge. And can you see the lovely trees there with the things coming down? Really nice. And then, I just want to show you a close up of the water lilies that he painted because we could do the water lilies and the bridge today. I think that would be really, really nice. So you need a piece of paper, pencil, it's cold. Right, so what you want to do is find out where you want the water lilies, where do you want the bridge. So just to help you, and I'm going to do it with a light pencil, I'm just going to do, press lightly, just do a line. Can you see that line? I'm going to do that in the middle of my page. It doesn't have to be exactly straight, it's fine. This is going to help you see where your bridge is going to go. It's going to be a very simple bridge. Then all here, you're going to have loads of water lilies and foliage like plants. So the first thing you need is think about a bridge. A bridge is not a massive rainbow. It's kind of like quite a subtle thing that goes like that. Mine's a little bit wonky, but it's okay. And on this bridge, it's got a bit of a thickness. So think of it like a snake or a worm. So you're going to have that one. Then you're going to go, it's a big, oh, so it's a little bit like a rainbow. And then that becomes a snake, very close together. Okay, now this is the complicated part, but it doesn't have to be. You're going to do a straight, oh, it's not a straight line. <laughs> it's one line on its own, just there. Then you're going to do one just there. So you've got a lot of lines. If you don't want to do all the lines, just do a normal two lines, one, two. What you want to do now is you've got to join the snake to the line. So this snake, the top snake, is going to this line. So you're going to do this. Doesn't matter if they're on an angle because really they'd be more straight. But do you know what? Doesn't matter. So think of them as like long chips. That'd be cool. Okay, that's fine. Now this bit can either go from that from well from that snake to here, or you could leave it. If you're getting really confused, leave it as it is. Or in between, you're gonna join up, you're joining up the top snake with chips that go to there. So if you're still not sure, do not worry, you don't need to do this. This is if you're a bit older or you find it a bit easier. Then just here, we're gonna just do a little, little line. Okay, that is your bridge, that's your 3D bridge. So a person's gonna be like, la, la, la. Okay, now you wanna do your water lilies. So I always do a water lily that go, they're big here and they go further away. So. Do a circle, like a flat pancake, and then you can just go. So they remind me a little bit of Pac-Man. Or, if you want to, just do a circle like that. It's not really a circle, it's more like a circle squished. So do a couple of those. And then as you get towards the bridge, so as you get towards your horizon line, it's going to get smaller because it's in the distance. So they get, they start off small and they go big. So you could do lots if you want, or you could just do a couple. That's up to you. Okay, doesn't matter if some of them are big and small, it's fine. 
Then we're going to do, I like to do the water lilies plants, uh, the flowers. So you could do it like that. And if that's too quick, you can do a shape like that. And then you go, and then, or some people like to do this. U shape, and then zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. I really like that. I think that looks really pretty. So we could do a mixture. Mixture. Just doing that over there. Okay. Now for the trees, we're going to do, it's quite nice to make it look like there's different types of trees. So we're just gonna touch here, just up here, and you're just gonna go, just gonna go lines down. Cause then it looks like a weeping willow that's behind here. It could look like a waterfall, but it's gonna be green, so it'll be fine. Then here, you could do, bit like this so just lots of bushes lots of bushes if you want to and you don't want to do bushes you could do a nice big tree so there's your um can I have a think of it trunk trunk of the tree so you could do a trunk going up and then you could do just like a rectangle or a chip and then chip again and then just out and then all that could be nice big tree. So it's just a wobbly line all the way around. And then you could do some more plants. Think about long, almost like swords, long reeds. You could do, it looks like clouds, but it's more, more trees like that. And it's gonna be in between all of that. So that's fine for now. You could do a little bit of a, these are like, they look like clouds, but they're more like, um, bushes right here really I mean you could put animals in there you could do whatever you like but here would be nice if we just did a long line up and these are going to be lovely reeds you know those ball reeds they're a little bit like this you go all the way up straight then you just do like a tic tac on the top it looks really really lovely so just more reeds think of them as swords and then if you want, you could do some stones, just a few stones there. If you don't want to put anything there, that is fine. If you do, you could just do maybe like a rock there and you could have a frog sitting on it or something else you like. And here, because it's far away, we need to make it look like it's stopping. So we could just do that to make it look like there's the river bank. You don't have to do that, by the way. Or you could just do lots and lots of grasses. So it's like the swords. Right, once you've done that and you've got everything you want on your picture, now it's time to colour it in. Now, coloured pencil, chalk, whatever you like. I'm going to use chalk because it's just easier for me to show you how to do the colours. So we want to do... Let's start with the top because then we can work our way down and we don't want to worry about the bridge till the very end. So we want a nice, I'm going to do a sky because it always looks nice. So I'm going to choose a blue, I'm just going to colour the sky in and whatever the bridge is. So if my sky carries on and on, then I am going to do it all the way down to that horizon line and I'm going to go over the bridge. It's okay, you're only doing it lightly. Now I'm going to smudge it. If you want to do it with the chalk, because it's chalk pastel, then it would be nice, but you don't have to. So you've got your sky there behind the, the bridge. Okay. Now you want to do probably three different greens. If you don't have three, get two. So you want to darken a light green. If you don't have you know, a, a light and a dark, just get, a, just get a one green. And I'm going to do some light green there, really lightly as it goes over the bridge. So this is like my weeping willow tree. And if you're a bit older or you feel more confident, you can add more green here and there. And next to it, I'm going to do some dark green for the, for the bits of the tree. And then here, you know, as I say, if you've got different greens, then have a go at doing all the different greens. We could do a beautiful turquoise blue because that actually looks really nice on a picture. 
even if it's supposed to be green, a bit of blue looks really lovely. So we're going to do a bit of dark green there. Uh, pause the video if you need to, because I'm doing this super duper fast. But you want to do it a little bit slower. Unless you've got chalk. <laughs> okay then the other side the other side we want a brown any brown you like any brown okay Woo. any brown so you got that there that really reminds me of chocolate mm -mm. i've been eating a lot of chocolate at the moment <laughs> then any green for the top of the tree I always like doing light greens for the tops of pictures, but you can do a mixture. You can do a light or a bit of dark. Oh man. Right. Now like a bit of yellowy green with the reeds so i've got a yellow and i've got a green oh, i've got chalk on my nose <laughs> so i'm doing a yellowy yellowy green for the reeds right now i'm taking my one finger if you haven't done that if you've got chalk and you're just gonna smudge you're just gonna blend it now claude monet did brush strokes which is when you paint and you've got paint on your brush and you're doing brush strokes like nice brush strokes so what we could do I wonder if I've got any paint on there I might do it for you now with the water it's just some of you might not have paint but do you know what shall we do it I might do a close-up of a water lily tomorrow just so you could see the way that you do the brush strokes because at the moment we're trying to do a whole picture and then maybe we could do the brush strokes uh, tomorrow because that would look really lovely now the water you want to make sure the water's beautiful it's got lots of different colors so you don't need to worry about it just being blue it looks really nice sometimes I do this I do a little bit of blue there a little bit of green there maybe even a little bit of yellow another bit of blue there it's a different type of blue and then you kind of get your finger and you just smudge a little bit. You don't want to smudge the whole thing, just a little bit, because then the water all looks really nice and you can smudge where it finishes and where it starts. So, for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. A little bit blue, a tiny bit of green. Water lilies can be pretty much any colour you want. I quite like the idea. Of, um, I'm gonna go over the water lilies just because it doesn't matter that I've yeah, done that. Oh, I love those colours. Look at those colours, they're so cool. Ah, oh, just love colour. Okay, so it's roughly the water. The reason why I'm doing them different colours, if you can have a look at that, it's like there's not just one green in there, is it? It's kind of like a blues and greens. So the water lilies itself. I might get a dark green and then you don't want to go over your nice pretty flowers so ooh, looking a bit, a bit dark actually so you take your time I fell on the floor again So it's been covering all the water lilies. And once you've done that, pick a really cool colour for your water lily, um, water lily uh, flowers. I would probably go beautiful pink. You could do pinky whites. It just makes the picture stand out. It's really, really pretty. So you could do a pink or you could do pink and white. It's actually whatever you want to do. And if you decide you don't like it, you can go over it with things. This is my white, and I'm just going over the pink here and there, just to show a bit of texture and to make it look more interesting. 
because when you add white to things, it looks quite cool. Right, once you've done that, I want to do all here. I'm loving this green, which is really light. So have a go at doing different greens. But I'm going to do my green here with my chalk. It's a lovely bit of green. And then the ball, ball reed, I think it's called. You could do tons of a bit of ball reed. You could do a lot of them because they're such lovely things. They look really nice in the water. I'm going to smudge that. Then behind there, you might want to do a bit more. Woo! Kind of a little bit, a little bit messy. Gosh, it's very messy actually. So you want to cover all that. You can do anything there that you want. For my um, rock, I'm going to do grey. Then the other side, I might do grey there as well with my green hands. <laughs> Try and get your hands not so dirty. Then up here we're going to do another light, light green. Oh, look at that, wow, love that green. Okay, so once you've done that, because it's such a cool picture, you could do add whatever you like. For the brush strokes, because it's chalk, you could start adding the brush strokes on top to make it look like water. So you're just doing like this, put it on the paper, do a line, do a line, do a line, do a line. You could do that with all of the water, or you could get a white, it might not show up unless it's chalk, but you could do that with there. Even with the trees, you could go over with a darker color and just do some lines. It looks really nice because it creates his technique, which were the brush strokes and then you can smudge it a little bit. If you're not quite sure where to get chalk from, get your parents to email me, the link's on the bottom of the YouTube video, because chalk is a really lovely thing to use. There we are. Now, I am going to get, you could get a dark blue, you could get a black, I'm gonna get a real dark brown. I think it's dark, and I'm gonna draw over the snake, because I'm coloring in, I'm coloring in very carefully. Oh, I'm colouring in my snake super careful. So that's one snake coloured in. Now the other snake is there, so I'm colouring that snake really carefully. Take your time. Okay, and the other snakes I colour in would be that bit there. So can you see a long snake? If you're not sure, just only colour in what you see as a snake. If it's not a snake, don't colour it in just colour over the line, so you'd go, this is just a line this one isn't it, so I'd go like this, I'll just draw over, so if you've got a coloured pencil you're just going to very carefully colour it. Okay now you're going to do the railings because you don't want to be falling through the bridge and you can add them in, if you can't see them anymore, it doesn't matter, you can make them up, so see how you get on, it can get quite confusing now. And it doesn't matter as long as you have a bridge that's all that matters okay, so. right now the bridge looks a bit see-through at the moment and that's because this bit the bottom bit is where they walk so then you can color all that in now color all that in if you can and then just smudge it if the bridge is very complicated do not worry all you need to do is this if I, if I find things complicated, I normally just make them very simple to help me. So that is, there's your bridge, there's a horizon line, there's your bridge, there's a line, and that is your bridge. Keep it like that if that's helpful to you, it doesn't matter. This is just a slightly more advanced bridge. So we're going to just draw over to soften the lines. Oh, oh man. It's quite tricky because there's a lot of lot of lines. Now it's really nice, I think I said it in my other video, it's so lovely to put animals on there and to also sign your work. So I would do it at the bottom, I'd get a chalk or a coloured pencil that's like really dark and there's my name. Now that looks quite messy but it's okay because it's a signature. 
it's something that your parents would do to sign a cheque, it's something that's yours, it's like it's your signature. It's a bit like if I make a cake, my signature cake would be, oh, what would it be? Victoria sandwich, because I'm really good at those. Okay, well I'm not that good actually to be fair. Though. Right, I'm putting in shadow, so I've got a darker version of the brown I used. Putting in some shadow, then you can look at your picture and think, ooh, what else do I want? So you could make that bit darker because it's on the ground. You could go over here and do, make that little bit there darker. So you've got the reeds. So you can just add to it if you like. It's lovely to look at it and think, hmm, what else do I want to add? I'm going to go around the ball reed just so it looks like stands out. It looks really nice. It's funny because I like adding animals into them really. Ooh, this light green's cool. So you could literally add some light green if you've got the chalk. If not, use colour pencil. If it's nearly used up this light green. And then we're going to do, probably do the water quite dark where it finishes with the horizon line. And then just smudge it there. And that is pretty much your Claude Monet a bridge over his lovely big pond. Ah. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that. Let me know how you get on. I'm loving seeing your pictures. So please continue to send them in. Uh, share and subscribe and spread the word to everyone. Because it's nice to make these videos for everyone. I'm putting in more of these brush strokes. Because they're pretty cool. Do you know what I mean? It's quite fun to do this. You could do it with all the trees if you've got chalk. Now I'll show you the chalk. It's these. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Cass Art as well. But they're amazing. They're so good. I love them. Yeah. So happy drawing. Let me know how you get on and I will see you tomorrow.